If you do a search for the most preferred critical race theory books after uh, this one, and you go by Stefanovic and Delgado's book, about the third book on the list is usually this guy, Ibrim X. Kendi, How to Be an Anti-Racist. 300 pages of my life. So let's talk about this book. There's numerous copies of this in circulation, and thousands of the woke have imbibed Kendi, and they might even be unaware that his New York Times bestseller on how to be anti-racist is more likely to turn a person into some kind of a racist than the opposite. Now, it's likely that although neither you nor I are racists, we couldn't qualify as anti-racist based on Kendi's definition, because listen to what he says. Quote, we cannot be anti-racist if we are homophobic or transphobic, unquote. Now, my guess would be that most of you, like me, do not just like automatically dislike homosexual people as a group, but that you disagree with the normalcy and the morality of their sexual practice. And likewise, we probably do not automatically dislike transsexual people, but we disagree that substantive change from one sex to another is possible or that you can it's even possible to be born into the wrong body. We might gently and kindly, uh, respectfully disagree with people who hold those positions, but today, you know, it's fill-in-the-blank phobia. If you don't agree completely, they want totality. If you're not totally on board, you're a transphobe, you're a homophobe, you're a blankphobe. So we probably couldn't even fit, and so we're kind of ruled out. If we don't go along with basically every ism, every feminism and all the LGBT letters and all those, all that stuff, we can't be anti-racist, according to Kendi. So we can't even really join the club. Now, Kendi, like all the woke, he's he's very obsessed with language and definitions, and you, you see this as you read the book. For example, there's there's 18 chapters in here. 16 of those chapters begin with lists of definitions. Sometimes there's two, sometimes three words, sometimes there's several words. Definitions, definitions, definitions. And definitions are not a bad thing, but remember, with this social constructivist idea that these people have, they're determined to control the language. Since woke theorists believe that society is really a socially constructed consensus, they're determined to control that consensus, and they're they're pretty nervous about it. So, you know, kind of like Barney Fife, uh, very intensely worried about that thing. And so they suppress and censor those who don't go along with their new definitions. They're very busy policing language, and dissent is not allowed. But now that sets up a clash with those of us who believe that reality is created by a loving, benevolent, personal God. Reality is created by a benevolent, all-knowing God who interacts with us on a person-to-person basis. He sets the moral bounds we're born into. We're born into the world that he made. But the woke viewpoint is that there is no transcendent creator. In effect, you know, humans then are non-transcendent beings locked in a room with each other, kind of dangerous beings, and everything is power relations. So the only question really then is which gang is presently in control? Now, although there's very little explicit mention of critical race theory in Kendi's book, it's got all the pieces. It talks about hierarchy, oppression, white supremacy, intersectionality. It's all over through there. The authors, authors like Kimberly Crenshaw, Angela Davis, and others, some of the standard fare, CRT authors, they're mentioned here. So it's very clear uh, this book is definitely right there, right in the center of the uh, CRT grouping. Now, Kendi, whose name originally appeared kind of non-exotically on his birth certificate as Ibram Henry Rogers, tells us how his parents began as Christians, but, quote, found themselves leaving the civilizing and conserving and racist church that they realized they'd been part of. They were saved into black liberation theology and joined the churchless church of the black power movement, unquote. As Kendi put it, quote, they stopped thinking about saving black people and started thinking about liberating black people, unquote. In other words, they lost sight of their pilgrimage to the heavenly and sort of came down to a focus on the material. And Kendi embraces their focus on the material. For example, with his definition of inequity, quote, racial inequity is when two or more racial groups are not standing on approximately the same footing, unquote. It's not equality of opportunity they're interested in, but the removal of all inequalities. And you can imagine how far that task goes. So why aren't all groups on an equal footing? Well, Kendi has a very simplistic answer, and his answer simply is racism. Racism. If, if, if everybody isn't on the absolutely equal material plane, it's obviously because of racism. So let's talk about anti-racism. 
Candy, like the rest of the woke, finds himself in that strange place where they want their movement to be identified with the continuation of the anti-racist progress from the 1960s, but on a key point, they're in a totally different place than it is. I'm talking about the idea of colorblindness. I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. From 1963, Martin Luther King's famous speech on this, let's, let's listen to this for just a minute. Martin Luther King Jr. saw the desired progress this way. I say to you today, my friends, e so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. This is the idea of colorblindness, that the goal is to see people as individuals, because character is always an individual matter. Now, in contrast to this comes, comes critical race theory, as espoused by Kendi and others. Kendi's determined to counteract and to get rid of colorblindness. He's exactly the opposite of that speech of Dr. King. Kendi says this. He says, the language of colorblindness, like the language of not racist, is a mask to hide racism. Yes, he says that. He goes on to say that it's uh, this idea of colorblindness, it, it's, it, teaches you passivity. And he says a colorblind constitution is, quote, for a white supremacist America, unquote. So to Kendi, it's essential to differentiate racial groups. We got to keep track of every color, every group. And again, here's what he says. In order to treat some persons equally, we must treat them differently. And, and then he goes on and he says, the most threatening movement is not the alt-right's unlikely drive for an ethno state, but the regular Americans drive for a race neutral one. Unquote. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King said his vision was, quote, deeply rooted in the American dream, unquote. Kendi says that's all wrong. And he, he actually goes on to quote Jefferson Davis, who was the president of the Confederacy, who said, I guess, that America was founded by white men for white men. But I, I think if we check history, we'll find that the South lost the war, the Confederates lost the war, for whatever you think of that, by insisting that we maintain this totally alert kind of anti-color blindness that uh, Kendi's going in the very opposite direction as Dr. Martin Luther King and all the progress that was made in those years. And I think most Americans agree with that progress that's been made. But according to these guys, we're, we're in a worse state than ever before. Now, some people have pointed out how Marxist and communist thought has sort of seems like it's a key thing in all this. And some people, some people kind of laughed at that. But again, if you read Kendi, I think you, you, your concerns will increase rather than decrease. That's a couple of points here from Kendi on this. There's many pages in this book where Kendi offers complaints about hierarchy, white supremacy, intersectionality. I mean, it's all over, it's all through there. There's a lot of pages linking, I mean, particularly linking racism and capitalism together. Kendi says this, he quotes, he quotes Marx, Karl Marx, that's the one. Yes, that's that guy. Marx recognized the birth of the conjoined twins, unquote. Now, the conjoined twins, according to Kendi, are racism and capitalism. Those are the two pieces that are always found together. They always go together. Uh, it's bad news either which way. They, they're the conjoined twins. He seems to really like that phrase, the conjoined twins. And he wants us to use the term, quote, racial capitalism. That's what we grew up in. That's what we live in today is, is I guess, racial capitalism. Really? Now, Kendi claims that the conservative definition of capitalism is, is uh, this one on page 161. It is, quote, the freedom to exploit people into economic ruin, the freedom to assassinate unions, the freedom to prey on unprotected consumers, workers, and their en environments, the freedom to value quarterly profits over climate change, the freedom to undermine small businesses and cushion corporations, the freedom from competition, the freedom not to pay taxes, the freedom to heave the tax burden onto the middle and lower classes, the freedom to co-modify everything and everyone, the freedom to keep poor people poor and middle-income people struggling to stay middle-income and make rich people richer. The history of capitalism, of world warring, classing, slave trading, enslaving, colonizing, depressing wages, and dispossessing land and labor and resources and rights bears out the conservative definition of capitalism. So, unquote. So that's, 
definition of capitalism going on here? Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not going to defend every single thing that he listed there, but he took sort of the bleakest possible view uh, of the free market. And, of course, there are definitely some issues going on with monopolies and abuse of those monopolies today. So, again, I'm not defending all that. But I, but I do kind of wonder who, I mean, who, whether liberal or conservative or whatever, who identifies with that, what, that description of, uh, of things? I mean, who, who's in favor? Who in the West today is in favor of slave trading today? I don't, I don't know who that, who that would be. And then aside from some uh, arms manufacturing corporations and some politicians, who's in favor of world warring? I mean, you know, yeah, those guys in the media, the main mainstream media, people in general aren't for that. Where's he getting this? But Kendi goes on, and if we go over just one more page to page uh, 163 here, here's what he says. Here's a whole paragraph. To love capitalism is to end up loving racism. To love racism is to end up loving capitalism. The conjoined twins are two sides of the same destructive body. The idea that capitalism is merely free markets, competition, free trade, supplying and demanding, and private ownership of the means of production operating for a profit is as whimsical and ahistorical as the white supremacist idea that calling something racist is the primary form of racism. Popular definitions of capitalism, like popular racist ideas, do not live in historical or material reality. Capitalism is essentially racist. Racism is essentially capitalist. They were birthed together from the same unnatural causes, and they shall one day die together from unnatural causes. Racial capitalism. Capitalism is essentially racist. You learn something new every day, don't you? Anyway, at, at every term, whether it's feminism, gayness, uh, lesbianism, transgenderism, uh, fill in the blank with whatever ism is the latest, the latest ism. Maybe I'm behind a couple weeks and, and haven't caught the latest ism. But every single time, Kendi aligns with these new views that are that are critiquing, deconstructing, re-envisioning, uh, retelling the story, changing the story, and, and, and telling us all the bad things that it's finding by all this deconstruction. Kendi's with every single one of those things, every single possible critique against the civilization we live in. And you know, there's, there's, there are some things to critique, I, I give you that. But to be again in this mode, if we're going to just burn everything down and start over, you know, you might want to think twice before you do that. Anyway, Kendi's ideas are, are, are pretty similar to other uh, critical race theory people. Not a lot really new here. Unfortunately, instead of deracializing us, these guys are re-racializing us. They're increasing tension in the country. They're going backwards from the gains from Dr. King and the people that promoted that. And why do we have to go backwards? I mean, why, why do we have to go back into keeping a color chart all the time? Now, I might be mistaken, but I, I thought this book was also on the North American division my, of my church. I thought it was on their reading list, but uh, they've suddenly retired their reading list. I can't find it anymore. So I, I don't remember if it was on their list or not. But uh, I can tell you I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. This was $27 that was not well spent, and you can definitely do better. In fact... Uh, Shelby Steele, White Guild, is still uh, one of the best I've read. But that one was not on their reading list of recommendations. But let's sum up things. If reality is socially constructed, then it's not difficult for us to understand these frantic attempts to war against the other groups and get to the top of the stack and become the group that's that's taken taken grabbed hold of the, the civilizational steering wheel because they want to be on top and and force their way down and, and just beat everybody else and, and make it run their way because there's no created world out there. We've got to make it up and do it ourselves. So there's no escape from what we think are the bad things. Uh, we're, we're on our own and so we've just got to fight until we get to the bottom of it. When Kendi's parents abandoned Christian salvation for black liberation, they went in a wrong direction. I'm afraid some of it rubbed off on their kid. Black power or any other color of power, that's not our goal. It's a very human way, a very material way to look at the world, that uh, we're on our own around here and we just have to make it up as we go. That's kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog plan, and it's not the plan we have. God made a good world. When he made everything, Genesis 1, he looked around and he said, hey, this is very good. Tov ma'od, very good. Humans rebelled. God the Father sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. He breaks down the middle wall of separation. Ephesians chapter 2. I've already mentioned this before, but I mention it again. Christ if there is a problem, Christianity is the answer. Treating each other with kindness, with respect, with dignity. Uh, being blind to the color. Looking at uh, the character 
the character of a person rather than the color of a person. That is a good plan. That is important. That's consistent with the Bible. That's consonant with the values of Christianity. But Christianity is probably just another one of these uh, European religions that he says in his book here is masquerading as a world religion. Friends, the philosophy of critical race theory is destructive. It's superficial. It's counterproductive. It doesn't match the real world. It's a bad prescription for us and is going to increase rather than decrease racial tension. So uh, how to be an anti-racist? Uh, we need the buzzer sound here. This is a fail. $27 not well spent. Save your money.